All right, there are some notes that you have that you can use to fill this in. Um, this is a slideshow at any point. If I go too quick through the slideshow and you can't fill it in on the paper that you've been provided, just pause it or rewind it. So reproduction, the definition is it's the production of an offspring either through asexual or sexual reproduction and realize all organisms reproduce to make offspring. And so on the next bottom part of your notes, you'll see that you have a Venn diagram and I'd like you to label your Venn diagram with asexual on the left and sexual on the right. And what you're gonna do is you're going to use these five phrases and you're going to fill in your Venn diagram. Now at this point, this is towards the end of going through this unit. So you should be able to fill these words into your Venn diagram pretty easily. I'd like you to pause the video until you do that and then restart the video to see where, and you can check and see if you did this correctly. So on the left for asexual reproduction, you should have put one parent. For sexual reproduction, there are always two parents that donate genetic information. For asexual reproduction, since there's only one parrot, there's genetic continuity. That means the genes stay continuous. There's no variation whatsoever. All the offspring are clones of the original parrot. Whereas in sexual reproduction, you have two parents donating information, so there is always genetic variation there. You also have some notes where you filled in a table on the differences between asexual and sexual reproduction, and I would use that to study um, further information and more details about the two. The one thing that they ha they both have in common is that they're both ways that off that organisms produce their offspring. All organisms undergo cell division. We haven't talked too much about this, but this is a picture of a chromosome within your cells. And chromosomes are the physical structure that hold all your genetic information. You can see this is a long strand of DNA. Uh, and again, that is the code that makes you. And it will wrap around the chromosomes, especially right before it decides to duplicate itself, uh, just so that it has a place to kind of organize around. Humans have 23 pairs of these chromosomes in inside of our cells for a total of 46. Now, this is not in your notes. I just wanted to share this information with you. But as far as other organisms, how many chromosomal pairs they have, right? We have 23 pairs. A garden onion has eight. Mosquitoes have three chromosomal pairs. A potato has 24. A horse, 32. Wheat, 21 pairs. Rice, and again, think this is a plant, so it's a living thing, so it's going to have genetic information, has 12 chromosomal pairs. A frog, 13. A cat, 19. And a dog, 39. I'm going to have you watch this short video. Your genes come from your parents, of course and from their parents, and from their parents' parents, and, well, you get the idea. You have two sets of 23 chromosomes, one set from each parent. For almost every chromosome you inherit from your mother, you also inherit one from your father that has his versions of the same genes. Together, they form a pair of homologous chromosomes. The X and Y chromosomes, however, are special. Usually, females have two X chromosomes, while males have an X and a Y. You get one of your X chromosomes from your mother. Whether you get your father's X chromosome or his Y chromosome determines your sex. Most adult cells contain two sets of chromosomes, but sperm and egg cells have only one set of 23 chromosomes each. 
When the body forms sperm or egg cells, a cell divides and pairs of chromosomes separate. A random member of each pair moves into each new cell. This is why, when you were conceived, you obtained half of your mother's genes and half of your father's genes. But your siblings didn't necessarily get the same versions of your parents' genes that you did. Unless you happen to be an identical twin. To form sperm or egg cells, your chromosomes double, like so. When the homologous pairs separate, sometimes they cross over and at seemingly random points exchange DNA. This is called genetic recombination. Because your genes get shuffled during recombination, the chromosomes you pass along to your children are not exactly the same as the ones you inherited from your parents. This makes it hard to use most of your chromosomes to trace your genealogy back very far. However, most of the Y chromosome is handed down from father to son entirely intact. Likewise, in humans, DNA in the mitochondria is passed down only from mother to child. For this reason, ancestry along your father's line or your mother's line is easier to trace using the Y chromosome or mitochondrial DNA. When sperm and egg cells join together at fertilization, they create a single cell with two complete sets of 23 chromosomes, one set from your mother and one from your father. This single cell will divide to create new cells over and over until it creates a child.